Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Wednesday, December 1st, 2021. Very interesting day today. And so I'm going to jump right into this. I have continued to hold to account that the S&P, along with the NASDAQ, was going to turn on its heels and fall off a cliff. And as this third wave continued to develop and move lower. And so the market started out higher this morning. They were in a buy mode. They were gonna to continue to push uh, the whales coming in to AMAT, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, Microsoft, Google, et cetera. Moving in, they're gonna place their bets. And then the market turned. And then the market started to go down. So from the S&P being up, I believe, I'm not sure what the total was, but the high was 4650, almost 4651. And from that level, the market proceeded to drop and finishing down almost $59. And it actually was down, I think, 60 at one point, uh, or over, about 65, because the low is 44.97, 44.98. So if we add an additional $10 to that, it was down $69. From the high down to the low. And that is being counted out as follows. So from that all-time high at 47.42, we have a minor one, we have a minor two. Then we have minute one and minute two as this third wave begins to subdivide several times. So one and two, so now we're in minor three. First subdivision, one and two. Then we get another one, two. So that's twice. So the third wave in and of itself is of subdividing into three, but that extension is happening within the minute third wave. And within that minute third wave, it's subdividing. And that's today we got the three of the three and likely still have more to go to get that three of the three of that larger third. I know it can sound very confusing, but this is how waves extend, prolong, move further, gain all that steam, and just push. This is classic Elliot at work. Can be confusing, can be deceiving, but I saw no reason to back off of the count that I had seen developing. And so today it followed through. <clears throat> so what I believe we've done so far within this minor third wave, we are in that, in that minor third and we're in the minute third of that. So we're still within the three of three move. I think we still have one little bit more rally and that could have been it. See that little blurp that got up to 17 and now we're heading back down. So if the market moves back down and goes back below, what is that, 4497, 75, 4498, that would likely put in this finishing fifth wave for the minute third wave. And then that would be complete there. I'm not gonna count that as, as the possibility. I think we still will end up a little bit and then come back down. But having said that, let me just explain. And I'm gonna push this out and look at the 30 minute because I'm of course looking at my screen, which is on a 27 inch screen and so I can see a lot better. So I wanna open this up to the 15 minute and then open this up so we can take a look at what's inside all of this. So you can see, so we had this little bounce, there was that low. And so I'm putting the three here, this three is, gonna, is over here. 
And so I think maybe we got the A. I don't know if that's the whole thing. It could be. If so, then I'm going to stick a four up here somewhere on this degree. And then a move back down below 4497 would produce the fifth wave of this degree. And then that would put in that third on the minute degree, which is sitting way up there. That's where it started. Okay. So the subdivisions are really just beautiful. They all fit. They're all good. And so I'm, I'm satisfied with this, with the count as it is. Um, and we'll just let this all play out. So once again, I'm going to go out to the 30 minute because that, that should give us enough a space where we can see. <clears throat> if you remember, uh, and, and yesterday's updates, I was discussing where I believe the third wave should finish up. So don't forget, this is just finishing the, the internal three, the minute three of the larger minor three. So then we still have a four and a five on a minute level to finish that minor three. So if we're just finishing this internal third, somewhere down here, maybe 4467, possibly, we still got a four and a five, and I still believe what we're gonna, where we're gonna end up to complete just the minor third of this initial five waves down here at 4,400. We got to 4,500 today. And I'm sure there are a lot of people during the day that thought that's not gonna happen, just not gonna happen when we're sitting at the 40, 4,650. We're not gonna drop 150 points, but sure as hell we did. We sure did. Without a doubt, we did. So that was a very strong, massive turnaround. In the Dow, it was close to a thousand points, high to low, a thousand point turnaround. Market was up massively, it was up well over 400 points. The NASDAQ was up well over 200 points and they all turned. And you can see the NASDAQ is down 300. The Dow future is down 480. The S&P down 62.50. So big moves. And I don't think that tomorrow we're going to get bounces, hands down, because that's just the way the market moves. Nothing goes straight down, nothing goes straight up in a straight line, I should say. Because there was times that you felt like we're just going straight down, we're just going down. And that's pretty much how it unfolded. Unless you were really trading it on a, on a one or two or five minute chart, then you caught all the little rifts in between where it was buy it back up, sell it back down, buy it back up, sell it back down. But each time it were lower highs, lower lows. Lower high, lower low. And that continued pretty much through the day. So <clears throat> I'm looking for our support levels at 44.68 to come into play. Then 44.44 coming into play. And ultimately, I'm looking for that third wave to be 1.618 of, actually, I need to redo that. You're going to forgive me because I put this on incorrectly yesterday. We did get down there, but now let me just redo this so that it is going to be more correct. Uh, I just have to turn this and put it there and then put the two there. So I will change that, but I'm still gonna use, we're still gonna have our uh, Fibonacci's giving us all the way down. So I'm gonna keep it in place. And as I measure out this third wave, so I'm still thinking this is where we're gonna end up. I will make my adjustments to the overall, this, this larger move and, um, Include it in the next update. But for right now, we have additional downside. So I think that we, we should expect a small fourth wave uh, bounce. And it actually might be, not be as small as we think because of the depth 
of this third wave, how, how far it traveled. Uh, so we could maybe get back up to 45, 50, back up towards this eight, and then turn again and come down. But with the intensity of the selling right now and the upset that it did on the day, I'm not suspecting that they're going to rush back in to start buying everything again. Could be wrong. Then I'm going to look for the end of the third, the minute third, another four, minute four, a minute five to complete this minor wave three. And that's where I will look for a minor fourth wave bounce. And that should be more resembling what we saw up here, what we saw here, what we saw here but it'll be in a fourth wave position. So each one of our corrected corrections have been pretty solid in terms of the move. It's been, you know, a, a, it's extended higher than I thought it should go. And I would not suspect that we'll see anything less uh, because I do believe that it's on Wednesday. So we have Thursday, Friday, the next exploration where all the stuff that's really being built up now comes off uh, is Friday. So we'll see. Uh, so we can finish this third wave tomorrow, the minute three, get that minute four in, and then among minute five, we could see some fireworks right through fright. So in any case, I'm looking for continued downside. Bounces notwithstanding, I think that we will have a continuation to the downside. Um, play accordingly. Use your moving averages. They really are guides. They've been they're, they're so superior when you're attempting to enter into exit trade to follow them on your short term and then check in. So if you remember yesterday, we were looking at the uh, daily here in the S&P. And I'm just going to double check on that today because we had such a large move that I want to see what damage did it do. As you can see, yesterday, we were above that 20. Then we broke below it. And then today we broke back above it. And that gave us that they had to push, 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 but they got it all the way up there. Then came the selling and it closed below the 20, below the four, below the eight, and actually below the 50. So the next reasonable level, according to the moving averages on the daily, the daily is now confirming to us, right? That first sign of weakness, maybe some strength, second sign of weakness, third follow through sign of weakness. So that's why I'm expecting this all to be completed. The, the, the daily now chart is now showing us weakness. Let's take it up one more. Let's just take a peek at the weekly. Because again, this is now telling you as we start moving out, what possibly could be going on? Check it out. Closed below the four, closed below the eight, right? They moved, broke them both, and then closed below them. That's important. Next up is the 20. Now, I would suspect that they're going to break that tomorrow. Maybe that'll hold. Don't know if it'll close, but if it does, this is almost surefire. And we, the weekly 200 is pretty well, yeah. That's just the 20, then we got the 50 way below. So that's the weekly. The weekly is now pointing towards weakness. Last week closed in weakness. And this is how we started and then it's failed. And now we've got, all, with the week's not over, but we're starting to break through. So if the week ends by closing below this 20, then we have weakness on the weekly chart. So we're building the case for this continuation of this correction and that these highs are likely to remain in place now. So every time we move down and, and we get additional confirmation off the daily, off the hourly, that downside should be continued it takes another notch off of the probability scale of the market doing a massive turnaround and rallying all the way back up and making it above 47, 42. So I think lower before higher. 
definitely right now. Okay, so for tomorrow, I'm looking for continued downside. Bounces notwithstanding, please do not discount how severe or how strong a bounce may feel. The volatility has increased again, and therefore it's going to be present in both the upside and the downside. So that's why don't discount how high a market can bounce. Try to use your Fibonacci retracements for those moves. Trade smart, use your moving averages, use the Fibonacci, use the Elliott. Let it guide your trades. Have a great trading day tomorrow. And the next update will be Thursday, December 2nd.